the time to start now or never I think all right then order the closed meeting report instructions were given out at the closed meeting that's about it and we're closing the meeting what well, be it resolved mr. mayor that the closed meeting be called to an end so that we may resume the regular meeting of town council seconded by councillor Levin. all those in favor thank you as i stated during closed meetings some instructions were given out and that's about all i have to say announcements mr lalon do you have any announcements no mr levert mr bouchard or er, yes i'd like to take about the inflatable uh, games that were uh, hosted during the uh, family week. We've been hosting this activity for the past few years. People love attending those events. Very well organized, a great number of volunteers that attend this event each and every year. And I'd like to thank the organizers of this particular event. And I hope we'll start this over again next year. I think that the community services are also, those people are also included in the organization of this great event, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> I forgot to mention them, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Councillor Cardarelli, no, no, no. Fine, then. Let's go on. Question period. If anyone has any questions uh, about anything to be discussed at this particular meeting here tonight, step up to the mic and give your name and address. My name is Roland Labonte. Uh, I'd like to refer to the meeting last Friday that was held at the La Rose Forest. It was a closed meeting. Why was it closed meeting? I can't tell you because it's a closed meeting. Well, usually you say, you know, we adjourn to a closed meeting for such a matter or such a file. For uh, Was it for an environmental matters? Well, I ask you to leave this meeting because we don't discuss any matters in a closed meeting in a public arena. Well, I'm just wondering why. It was a real estate matter. You mean properties? Fine. There's another thing I'd like to know also. Your ditch, not your ditch, but your drainage scheme that you want to build a, a, at the end of a Laurier Street, at the end of Caron Street, you want to build a type of basin type arrangement? Yes. Wasn't that a flood area designated for the Ottawa River at one time? Well, those are flood plains. Yes, those are flood plains. But if you're building a basin type area, how are you going to drain it out? It's going to drain it out in the basin is going to be draining out in the basement or the uh, bog area that's there. But we're in discussions with the Ministry of the Environment. But when you built something on Caron Street, the Ministry of the Environment asked you to put uh, drain underneath the roadway so that little small animals could go by. But there's a culvert underneath. Underneath Caron Street, there's already a culvert. I didn't see any culvert. You you saw the uh, ditch that runs along Carl Street? Yes, I did. And it drains into the boggy area. And it crosses Carl Street? Yes, underneath. Otherwise, you know, uh, you'd have w w the water level rise over top the roadway. I didn't see the culvert when they installed it. Okay, fine. Thank you. That's it. Well, thank you then. Okay, members' item none. Consent items. Are there anything you'd like to withdraw from the consent item list appearing on tonight's regular meeting agenda? Okay, Mr. Lavert, go ahead. You're always a designated person to read designated or consent items. Be it resolved, Mr. Mayor, that all items listed in the section of the agenda will be subject to approval. Ten point one: adoption of the minutes of the following meetings. Sub A, regular meeting, February 19th, 2020, and Committee of the Whole, February 19th, 2020. Item 10.2, the following recommendations from Committee of the Whole of February 19th, 2020, resolution to adopt the 2020 corporate work plan. Item 10.3. 
Resolution to appoint a member to the Environment Advisory Committee, item 10.4, Mr. Mayor. Resolution to adopt the tax reductions under section 357 and 358 of the Municipal Act. Item 10.5. Resolution to hire a bylaw enforcement officer. Item 10.6, resolution to appoint nine volunteer firefighters. Item 10.7, resolution to confirm that the 46th annual championship banquet and playoff organized by the Ligue Dum 74 and a half as an event of municipal significance. Seconded by Councillor Lalonde. All those in favor, carried then. Well, thank you. Item 11.1, traffic bylaw, uh, whereas uh, municipal staff was mandated to do a full review of the existing traffic and parking bylaw. And, Mr. Mayor, whereas council at its regular meeting of December the 16th, uh, 2019, deferred uh, the adoption of the revised uh, traffic and parking bylaw and requested that staff prepare a further report to clarify the winter parking restrictions. Be it resolved that Council adopt a new traffic and parking bylaw as recommended in report number admin 2019-013 and be it resolved that Council adopt an administrative penalty bylaw as attached to report number admin 2019-013. Seconded. Any questions? Councillor Zant. Uh, well, I certainly like the fact that we're allowing more uh, parking more than three hours, but is that going to be replaced by a bunch of signage prohibiting parking? So if, we so if we're... You can park there no matter what, and then put a sign from one end to the other saying no parking. So I just want to know, is that is that where we're headed, or... If you can answer me as to that, well, the intent at present present is to keep the parking provisions as they stand right now, as appearing in appendix, uh, as detailed in appendix 10C. There are provisions that might be ad added on for parking restrictions, but we went throughout the length and breadth of municipality to ensure that the signage was adequate and there were enough s signage, there was enough signage put up to this effect. Well, let's just take Laurier Street as an example. And Laurier stated there was certain space to be allotted in between such and such a vehicle. Let's say in front of the McDonald's restaurant. On the other side of the street, there's parking allowed. At present, there's no parking allowed over and above three hours. And I believe that's going to, that signage will be removing because we're saying we're removing the three-hour band. Yes, I just want to make sure that uh, there are some signs on Laurier Street that says no parking. It defeats the purpose, you see. We want people to park, to shop along Laurier Street, as well as other streets, of course. I understand your question. Well, the three-hour provision was removed as per uh, Council's wishes, saving except for those areas that are indicated. At present, a three-hour maximum uh, limit is imposed for Laurier Street. Is everyone in agreement with this? Because, because, let's say someone has to take the bus, for example, and there are no parking spaces available. He has to park on the street, on Laurier Street, because there's sufficient space on Laurier Street. Why could we, you know, prevent that individual f from parking on Laurier Street? I don't, I'm not, uh, in, uh, I'm not debating what you're saying. I just want to make sure that we canvas this properly. Well, if someone takes a bus, he has some, uh, he has sufficient space to park his car, uh, well, or her car, yes, but I'm just saying that as an example. We still have problems with some cars. There are some cars that do park in some parking spaces that are reserved for the church, for church purposes. But let's say you park on Laurier Street where you're not supposed to, well, you might wind up in trouble. Uh, there, how about the independent uh, store? The independent store? stated no, they didn't want any cars parked there. We just want to impose a three-hour maximum parking limit on Laurier Street? Well, the three-hour ban, Mr. Mayor, three hours 
is uh, set down because we want to give merchants the space to have different clients? Yeah, because uh, employees might park there for the whole day, you see. But we don't have 140 merchants there. Well, those that are there on Laurier Street, we, we wish to encourage, period. Well, I think that uh, given the municipality of the size of Terms and Rockland, it's certainly normal to have a three-hour time limit on Laurier Street. Otherwise, if you don't, the staff and the owners will park along Laurier Street and will, you know, prohibit free circulation or will impede, to a certain extent, free, free uh, circulation around uh, along Laurier Street. But all other municipalities do have public parking available. Well, according to me, the maximum then is one or two hours. Yes, but they have meters. It's a little different. We don't have any meters. But even with a meter, you can't park for more than an hour in those municipalities you're referring to. Well, that's that's not what I'm saying, but it's okay. It's fine. Let it go. I understand Mr. Zant's point, and I believe that usually in one's own business card, you want to have uh, cars uh, circulating freely each and every day, and you want... Uh, n uh, maximum number of vehicles to travel in front of your business to see your sign and also to have to, to, to keep that area fairly busy uh, vehicle wise and to uh, to prevent people staff especially to take up needed uh, parking space but I'm I understand uh, that we should encourage more vehicles traveling around the center core well as things stand right now with regards to uh, winter parking provisions from the end of November to the start of April. There's no parking there at night, exactly. Given uh, Council's wishes, uh, the bylaw was modified to respect this. So from the end of a November to the 15th of April. Now, let's not forget that people were are going to have to work during the weekend to warn people not to park after a certain time. No, we removed that provision, Mr. Mayor. Ah, I see. Councillor Calderelli, I'm going to play devil's advocate, Mr. Mayor, if you'll allow me to do so. If we adopt a three-hour provision, and if ever we encounter problems whereby an individual has parked his or her car there for weeks on end and has not moved his or her car, up to what point, what's the limit uh, if we are to remove this provision, are we empowered to do something to correct that situation, an, an option that might help us in removing a car that's been there for days on end? I don't know. If people have five cars and park and use car one on the Monday, but they won't use it until the next Monday. I'm not saying that this would, this is the case. <laughs> well, Councillor Car Cardarelli uh, raises a fair point. Councillor, uh, well, Mr. Villeneuve, there are options for abandoned vehicles. It's up to the discretion of the bylaw enforcement uh, department. We can't proceed during the wintertime, only during the summertime uh, months where we can move on this. If bylaw enforcement officers see that there's an abandoned vehicle, there are ways to go about, you know, uh, towing this vehicle. Uh, is this option left to our discretion to move or to act upon this abandoned vehicle if indeed we're dealing with abandoned vehicles? Yes, yes. I don't know where about, where in the appendix this is stated. Given Mercury Street and given modifications to the bylaw, has this situation been uh, resolved? Yes, yes, it has. The only thing I wanted to comment on was this. I'm disappointed with regard to um, winter uh, parking contingencies. There were many residents that were in favor of this. I understand uh, Council's wish concerning this, but let's mention that the City of Ottawa has adopted a similar type system and things aren't working out very well for them. I certainly am not in favor of this, Mr. Mayor, uh, given that it's Council's wishes, but Councillor Zant, uh, sir, could you add McCall Street on your list also? It's a one-way street. That's it between Garo and uh, Edwards. I didn't see uh, McCall on the list. McCall Street on the list. Is it a one-way street? Yeah, it's a one-way street. But at present, 
there are parking rights uh, on both sides that are given. Just take a look at this situation, Mr. Villeneuve. I'd appreciate you taking a look at this. Well, there are provisions in the bylaw that will allow us to bring uh, uh, about changes much easier now than in the past. So if a request is addressed to Public Works and it, this request meets requirements set out by the bylaw, then we can implement those changes immediately or expeditiously. Yes. Uh, what, uh, what worries me is the collection of the money concerning parking fees. Instead of, you know, dragging people in front of courts, we can settle this internally. Uh, how can we, how do we think, what would be the, let's say the, uh, the tactic to adopt to resolve the situation if we're dealing with someone who contests a ticket that has been given for illegal parking in brackets. We have to determine how this can possibly impact the budget in the future, you see. I know that our treasurer had mentioned that it should not bring about a major impact on how we do things or our budgets as they stand, but I'd like to have something quantitative, something I can get my, sink my teeth into before I take a decision. Well, of course, we took a close look at the situation and we've left time to administrative, administrative staff to prepare the groundwork to come up with a with a solution for that will satisfy both sides. Let's say if you receive a ticket, this ticket can be paid many ways and in many fashion. There's a process of appeal also involved in all of this if someone wants to contest a ticket. The difference is that everything is resolved internally, not in front of the court. A screening officer is called upon to appear then and a hear in front of a hearing officer. And uh, uh, see, the person who contests the ticket, what well, we have to make sure first that there's no mistake on the ticket that it was handed to the individual. The individual can either contest it, and uh, if that person is not satisfied with the initial decision, he can appeal the decision to the hearing officer. But this can always be resolved internally. We may make use of the same type of paralegal services that are offered at the L'Oreal Court. So there's no difference in the process. Once per month or once every two weeks, we can set down a specific day for hearings. People that would like to appeal the initial decision would appear at the town hall, and that would be the last part of the process, ticketing and appeals process. Now, because we're dealing with parking tickets, if an individual does not pay his or her parking ticket, we send his refusal or his non-payment notice to the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario. And when comes time to renew one's plate, he or she will have no choice to pay this. Will this amount be be uh, paid back to the city of Clarkson Rockland? Well, there's a charge that MTO does impose, $25 for administrative handling, that is charged back to the person that will have to pay if he refuses to pay or she refuses to pay. And if worse comes to worse, uh, they can appear before L'Oreal Court. Every Thursday, L'Oreal Court has his, its hearings. But for the population at large, I think it's much more convenient to handle things here in Rockland rather than travel down to Rockland. Other questions? All those in favor? Oh, I'd just like to indicate that the bylaw number is not indicated in the resolution. So for the traffic and parking. We're talking about bylaw 2020-18, Mr. Mayor, and for administrative penalties, it's reflected in bylaw 2020-18 also. 
Uh, so you're, you're, you're on top of things? Yes, and everybody's in favor, I believe. Well, thank you, Mr. Vinev. Uh, good work. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item 11.2, Mr. Bouchard. Uh, whereas, uh, Mr. Mayor, the 2020 Budget Deliberations Council approved the $2,956,000 uh, capital budget envelope, but not the proposed capital projects. And whereas, uh, during the 2020 Budget Deliberations Council directed staff to review the capital project list. And whereas, the capital project list cannot be developed without revising the city's current asset management strategy and plan, be it resolved that Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve a one-day special Committee of the Whole meeting on April 24, 2020, to revise the city's asset management plan. Seconded by Councillor Zan. Questions, Mr. Devin? So, Mr. Lennart, does that mean that the 24th of, uh, of April is the fastidious date, basically? Does that give us enough time to go to tender for works to be done? Well, Mr. Mayor, as I mentioned during the last member of council, there is a risk involved, of course. And we're going to try and uh, expedite the project as best we can. But the only way that we can tackle this project is uh, through this process. And if the, ever, the money is not used or utilized, it's plowed back into projects and possible grants for construction projects. And of course it will encourage uh, another amount, uh, further amount of works to be performed. Yeah. Well, we have enough roads to take care of. We can't set this amount aside in reserve. Well, we've taken care of the culverts and you have uh, you know, shoulders of different roadways. Uh, I believe we set aside one day, but we talked about three separate meetings. That certainly draws it out. It would be would it be on a Saturday that we'd meet all day long? Yes, all all throughout that day, Mr. Mayor, on that Saturday. Everybody's okay with that? Fine. Are you sure now? Going once, going twice. Mm. It's on a Saturday the whole day. Well, fine. All right then. Well. <laughs> You can take us to task at that, on the, at that time. Fine, 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 folks. That's great. Well, of course, uh, we, we, all we have to determine are the, the, the hours to start. Uh, i just like to grant contracts and not set this aside in a reserve fund because we have a lot of roadways to work on. We just want to make sure also that we have money set aside for construction projects also. But, uh, of course, we have to get to work on this ASAP. Are we going to, to pre help us to prepare for this meeting or obtain the information beforehand, or are we going to learn all in one fell swoop on that day what has to be done? No, you'll receive information. Uh, we'll have a facilitator involved, and he'll be sending you information beforehand to help you to prepare yourselves for the discussions that might be had on that day. And you'll also be uh, together for that full day to hash things out. Could you please also send us that list that you wish to start up with uh, work-wise? That's going to give me an indication of what you deem to be important that ought to be worked on initially. We can do so if you want to. Uh, Councillor uh, Chouanier, but we've already gone through that exercise before, but certainly we can forward this uh, to you. It could be, though, that uh, one department head might have uh, last-minute input and uh, change the order of things, but you know what was proposed in 2017, for example, as opposed to now, I'm not sure would have the same weight and value as to what needs to be done now from a monetary and work perspective. Mr. Lever, how about our 10-year plan, the one that was deferred from last year? Will that be part of the discussions for that day? Most of the discussions will be based on what council deems appropriate to move forward with. 
given the will of counsel that will manifest itself at that time when we meet. Uh, and we'll try to come up with some type of uh, common ground, if you wish, to go ahead with those projects that need to be addressed and that would be agreed upon on one side and the other. But it, what I'd like to determine is what you'd like to see wind up on that list. Councillor Simar, we're not going to propose streets, but criteria that will lead to streets being targeted. Yes, that's right. And the administration then, uh, given to those streets or those criteria that you've pinpointed, will take the necessary steps to, you know, to, uh, 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 to uh, start up the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Carry then. Thank you. Item 12.1. Uh, that's where we're at now. Councillor Simal. Mr. Mayor? Uh, oh, be it resolved. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that bylaw 2020 16, being a bylaw for the designation of lands not subject to part lot control for lot 90 of registered plan Andrew Bell 1908, located on Alma Street, Rockland, be adopted. Seconded by Councillor Bouchard. Any questions? All those in favor then? Carry. Thank you, folks. Confirmatory bylaw, be it resolved, Mr. Mayor, that bylaw 2020 17 be deemed a confirmatory, uh, confirmatory bylaw for decisions taken at the regular meeting of Town Council held on the 2nd of March 2020. Seconded by Councillor Chouanier. Adjournment called at 7 40. We'll see you back at 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, folks.